Dr. Krenko, welcome to the show. Thank you, glad to be here. Now, Mike, your innovative radio gel platform technology is designed to deliver targeted doses of radiation to cancerous tumors. Can you give us an overview of the technology? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Uh, it, people have called this a new tool in their toolbox. They're very excited about it. The best way I can describe it is to compare it to making jello. You can go to your refrigerator, you put the jello in, it cools, and it gels. Hydrogel is just the opposite. When you put it into uh, a tumor and it warms, it gels. And so you inject the tumor with a liquid directly into the tumor, and it gels, and it contains these teeny little particles of yttrium 90 phosphate. Now, yttrium 90 uh, is a, the highest energy beta emitter, and beta is nothing more than electron, like you see in electricity, but is very high energy and is very potent. We can deliver five times more radiation than an external beam therapy. So it does kill tumors. It also has a couple other features that are very important. It, it travels uh, just a short distance, like a quarter inch. So it doesn't do collateral damage to healthy tissue. You inject it in it, it kills the cancer, and then doesn't hurt the healthy tissue around. If you have a larger tumor, you just more than one injection. And the short distance has other two advantages. It's designed to, it's very safe for the applicator, the doctors, the veterinarians, there's no shine, they don't have any, any risk. And then even if you're treated the skin, the patient goes home same day therapy with no risk to the family and friends. Uh, another important feature is that it has a three day half-life. So every three days, half of it decays away. So after 10 days, uh, there's only 5% left. You don't have long-term lingering radiation. It does its job and it leaves the town. So it's a it's pretty exciting product. Now, what are some of the potential applications for your technology? Well, our, uh, we reconstituted our medical advisory board in January. It contains, they contain over 125 years of experienced doctors. And we said, okay, here's all the cancers that you can treat. Uh, what are the best that, that are for a radio gel? And they came back, they were pretty excited, with 18 different cancers. Of course, the problem is you cannot get 18 different cancers to the FDA. So we sent them back based on criteria, you pick the first one, the easiest one for the FDA, and they pick basal and squamous cell skin cancers. And that market alone, uh, our projection our, uh, is for us would be a one and a half billion dollar in revenues. And that's only one and there's 17 more. So it, it really has some really potential applications and, and, and potential high stream, long-term revenue stream. Thank you. Mike, what's the essential value proposition? Well, there's probably six points I'd like to emphasize. The first is this is a unique, wonderful technology. You simply inject it in a tumor, the cancer dies, and you don't do collateral damage. Secondly, we have strong intellectual property protection. Uh, it, we, this is a treasure and we're protecting it. Uh, thirdly is a team. This is a competent team and they work with a sense of urgency and we believe in tapping into the best uh, in the labs, universities, and the private sector. So it's a small team, but our extended team is quite large and very competent. Uh, fourthly, it's incredibly large market potential. I mean, for the pink sheet company to have this kind of market potential is incredible. We have uh, and, a, and a growth strategy is defined. Every time we get another indication for use, it's going to build. So this is a large park market potential. And uh, fifthly, uh, we are not just going to wait for the FDA approval. We're going to be trying to generate revenue earlier with the pets in an international licensing. And finally, what's driving our team is that we're going to help a lot of people and a lot of pets. Now, you have the medical side and the veterinarian side. Isopet should have a faster timeline to market. Can you talk to us about your business strategy for that segment and how big is the market opportunity? Uh, gladly. The, uh, I love dogs, so this is dear to my heart. Uh, we are interfacing with four different uh, nationally recognized uh, veterinarian hospitals, university veterinarian hospitals, for six, uh, six different cancers. So we're going to be using, uh, in parallel, four different centers. Uh, we, the first step is to get approval from their independent review boards to do the testing. 
and we have approval from Washington State, and we're close. We're three weeks away from two others, and about seven weeks from that. So in about six or seven weeks, we'll be testing in all four hospitals. Uh, the first testing was at Washington State on feline sarcoma. We just did two cats, but uh, and they just completed the uh, pathologic, pathological examination. They haven't written us the report yet, but Dr. Janine Fidel communicated to us. She said, we looked at the results, tell the FDA that this product works. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, it's first concrete demonstration that this is an effective product. Uh, what we learned from that simple test was a surprise to us also. Uh, the procedures that we use for treating feline sarcoma are exactly to the ones we're gonna use for skin cancer. So we already have developed these techniques uh, much more rapidly than we thought, and we'll be communicating that to the FDA. In terms of the size of the market, uh, it, it's not that we sneeze at. There are 78 million dogs and 86 million cats in the United States. And unfortunately, after they're 10 years or older, 32% uh, of the cats and half of the dogs will get cancer. And now our radio gel can't cure all those cancers. There's different types of blood cancers, but the ones we can cure, the six or eight that we think we can really treat, uh, that conservatively is probably $40 million a year market. Um, so that's our projection. All right, now you've got innovative technology Mike, thank you. Now, in summary, why should investors take an interest in ADMD today? Well, it uh, has the best best worlds. It, it, if the device actually translates to real savings, like we believe it will, and it'll, so it'll be a, a faster path to the uh, FDA and a, and a huge market potential of a drug. And and then in the meantime, uh, in fact, it was Westinghouse Corporation that taught me this years ago, you have to try to make revenue every step of the way. So we're going to be focusing on making revenue from the, from the pet sector and from our international sector. And I, I should say our team is small, but it's really competent. And what's important, it doesn't seem like, is we operate with a sense of urgency. Time is money. We're working seven days a week. We're excited about it. And uh, we think that's going to go a long way. Uh, we we really uh, and we know the medical community, the ones we're talking about it, are anxious to get this new tool in their toolbox. But what's really driving us, uh, and why I came out of retirement, is there's a potential to help a lot of people and a lot of animals. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. Pleasure having you on the show today. We look forward to hearing more from you and the company in the future. Thank you.